time for another review. This time we are reviewing the Blue Eddy model number EV150, which is a 1500 watt hour battery pack capable of 1000 watts of power output. I was lucky enough to get a black version of this top of the line power pack to put it through its paces to see how well it performs in the real world. It ships with an external power supply to charge it, rate it at 160 watts, which is not very big. So the first thing to do is to top it off to make sure it's fully charged up. If we do the math, 1500 watt hours at 160 watts, well, that's going to take about 9.3 hours to fully charge. Now, that's a long time. So long, in fact, that, well, I got impatient and I did this. All right, so this is the uh, included charger. This is only a 168 watt charger. So it would take about nine hours to charge it, right? So what I've done here is I'm using an external power supply, right? And that one is supplying, oh, earlier was supplying about 10 amps. So it's charging about 500 watts, about two and a half times faster. Uh, so, so you could do that you know, with an external power supply. After that, it's time to test the usable capacity of this unit. All right, here we go. We are testing capacity of this battery. Uh, I have my load here is this heater set at level two, which is about 816 watts. Here is uh, my counter, which corroborates that power level there 812 watts and so far we got about 57 watt hours right so we got a ways to go one hour later the battery's finally done right it still shows one little bar here but the the ac system now doesn't turn on oh wait a minute it did turn on like again all right, so it turned on a little bit. I don't know how much, but it, it turned off and it wouldn't work right now. So according to our little meter here, we were able to get 1.124 kilowatt hours, right? That represents about 75% of the battery. So we have an, an inefficiency of about 25% on the AC side. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that even though the battery is rated at 1500 watt hours when it goes through the inverter it loses about 25 percent of that energy to losses and the usable capacity it's only 1.124 kilowatt hours okay next time to look inside of this unit Here we go. Let's look at the battery. Here we go. So this battery here is pouch base, right? So these are what looks like 4S, so four cells in series, right? But these are multi-celled groups. So each group has three of these pouch cells, right? So it's a uh, 4s 3p that's the configuration and here we go they're interconnected oh yeah the positive is removed from here from this bus bar here and the negative is removed from here so of course this is the bms board and that goes in here and then you uh there's three screws that attach that right so let's look at this bms seems pretty straightforward uh it's got a lot of mosfets in here now of course remember the mosfets are uh, switches so they go in here right this is the the negative the battery's negative and it's got this little looks like steel but they're probably more like copper bars and that's just to give a little bit more uh, ampacity to this track right here, right? Because this is a 
a PCB. And then it goes from here, it goes through all of these little guys. Which, I don't know what they are. Uh, 4 milliohm? They're resistors? Maybe they're resistors? It looks looks like that's what they are. Uh, and then from there, it goes into this big old uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Right? 12 banks of MOSFETs. And these are just switches. It connects this trace here or this side to this side and then from here it goes into here and then it goes through these couple of 60 amp fuses right so and then this goes actually out to the inverter so in theory this is fused for 120 amps now how much do we see here at a thousand watts uh We'll have to do the math there. A thousand watts at uh, 16 volts, or this is a 4S battery. So uh, here's the other thing. This other cable here is the charging port, right? And that one goes separate, and then it goes through this set of four MOSFETs. And the reason why it's separate is sometimes you might want to disable the charging without turning off the discharging side of the port. So this is kind of essentially two BMSs in one. Whenever a BMS has a, a dedicated charging port, then it's essentially two BMSs. And in this case, as you can see, the char the discharging side has 12 of these MOSFETs. The charging side only has four, so it's a much smaller uh, circuit, right? It's a much smaller, so that means you can charge way slower than what you can discharge right and so this is a good design in this type of device because then it lets you to you know protect itself while it's charging but without interrupting the discharging cycle if you're using this thing right if the sun is shining bright and your battery's being charged and it's already topped off and it's already fully charged well you don't want to have to disengage and have it turn off the unit right which it would have to do if it was only the one side so that's uh part of the reason why it's a uh, separate like that and it's common on uh bmss now let's talk more about the fact that this is a 4s right so doing the math here let's do the math so 4s times 3.7 right it's a nominal 14 volt battery and in order to do a thousand watts you divide 14.3 or whatever it was so yeah so essentially this battery will see about 70 amps right from the uh from the unit here this is the uh part of the inverter right so 70 amps and it's fused at 120 so it's got a little bit of headroom there now why is this unit not capable of doing more than a thousand watts well i mean that's you know that there's many reasons why maybe they just because of choice they chose to put a 1000 watt inverter in here instead of a bigger one but and that's the reason why they went with a 4s battery now to go over that you will have to have or it usually helps to have a uh, more or a higher voltage battery so like in other units that i've reviewed they have a 48 volt right it's a 14s instead of this 4s this is quite low uh number of cells in series to be able to to do that and that's why the amperage has to be so high and that's what you have to have this beefy bms here but the problem is that when you run those sort those sort of uh high currents through these systems sometimes they run really hot right so this thing here is probably the hottest out of this entire thing and then what happens is that it's it has a high failure rate because these mosfets are supposed to stay kind of cool and when you put this unit here at the bottom of the battery there's really nothing cool in it there's there's really there's nothing here to help cool this it just goes right on the bottom of this unit and there's a little bit of space there air gap but there's nothing else right so 
I probably would see wouldn't be surprised if I start seeing some failure on the BMS size of these units. All right, now let's talk about the body here. This one's a little bit different than the ones that I've done before. Uh, units that I've reviewed before. This one is an aluminum extrusion, right? So this whole piece is extruded out of a mold, right? Or whatever that, that makes this. So this is a solid piece of aluminum here. Uh, it's pretty tough. Yeah, so this is going to be very durable. So yeah, it's pretty good. I think uh, it gets, it's a little bit harder for you to stuff uh, components in here as the other ones that I've seen before, right? So because you have to slide everything in there and so you have to rely on these little channels and on these little grooves and stuff. Um, if you ask me, they probably could have stuffed a bigger inverter in here, but they didn't. So from what I can see, this is part right here is the inverter while this part over here is the solar charge controller right and it's got mosfets on both sides yeah so the thousand watt inverter here is pretty small i mean it's literally you know this section here and then that they probably gonna put a bigger one but then they would have to use a uh you know more cells in in series which they could have done i mean there's there's plenty of cells in here they could have rearranged this thing now let's look at the uh things here this 12 volt um socket looks like it's it is regulated i do see a um there we go there you can see a um some kind of transformer or an inductor of some kind it's got two little mosfets here so this is probably regulated i thought just because this is a 4s right so it's a 14 uh, volt nominal that it probably would not but it looks like it is i kind of see a dc to dc here and so this one's rated at nine amps which is a little bit more than the other unit that i did uh, other than that yeah this looks pretty good i mean you know this is the side for the USB. So this is the low voltage side, right? It goes 12 volt and then it steps down to 5 volts. So that is pretty good. As far as the cooling is concerned, it's got two uh, fans. Uh, this one right here, which are bigger. I like big fans because they usually can move more air with less noise. And then this other one is inside here, right? So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I don't know if it's as sufficient as cooling as the other units that I've done. But if it's sufficient to this, then I say why not? Yeah, let's put this guy back together and see if we can uh, see if it works. <laughs> So now that it's back together, now I'm charging it again with a big power supply, 1400 watts, going direct into here at 53 volts, right? And it's only able to do about 495 watts. Uh, yep, about, so just under 500 watts. So it doesn't matter how many solar panels you put on this guy, I, for some reason, this could only handle about 500 watts of charging. So that is going to be your limit, right? Uh, probably about three hours charging. That's the fastest that you will ever be able to charge this if you do it through this port, obviously. So there you go. This is the Blue Eddy 1500 watt hour power pack. Uh, it's okay. I wish it had a bigger charger so it could charge faster i wish it had a bigger inverter so that you can you know use it with a lot of stuff like for example some coffee makers are above a thousand watts you know uh, welders are above that and compressors sort of stuff like that right a, a thousand watts is a lot of power and it might be very useful for probably 80 percent of the people out there right but i wish it had just a little bit more so that it could be an awesome, awesome unit. But 
again it's very useful for many people so uh it's well made i think uh it's well priced it's a big battery 1500 watt hours it's a lot of battery it would last a long time for someone that is camping someone that is you know just using it in an emergency uh situation uh it's pretty well so there you go i hope you like this review give me a thumbs up and we'll see you guys on the next video bye Thank you.